I'm really happy to be here at St Cuthbert's Mill. I'm painting on uh, the new Milford watercolour paper block. Um, and I like using Milford because it's hard sized and the paint sits on the surface of the paper a little bit longer, and uh, which allows me to work into it. Now I've chosen this, uh, it's the river axe and um, I quite like the lights on the river at the end, that's kind of spring green light, although I'm not going to put in the uh, overflow from the leak that's, um, that takes the water into the mill. This is actually the river axe, so um, I think I'll begin. Just to try and decide where I'm going with this to begin with, I think I'm going to put in a, a wash of lemon yellow and use that as the background because that is kind of the light that's on the trees and on this uh, reflections in this river. So I'll put this first wash in and then see where we go. And I quite like this kind of enclosed feel that you get down here. Uh, there's lots of dark but there's little flecks of light. I'm going to try and keep that but um, goodness knows how successful I'm going to be. just putting in the underlying kind of green wash of foliage so I'm painting around lights very very quickly I don't want to be too deliberate about all of this so just trying to feel where I'm going really I've not got any set plan I'm just moving around the paper randomly to try and create these random marks But at the end, I do want to feel as though I'm surrounded by dark. I'm just trying to assess where I am here with this, because I don't make any marks before I paint. So it's all very hit and miss. So I'm going to try and make some kind of marks that, compositional marks, I guess, instead of pencil because it's very difficult to remove or get back to white paper once you put the paint on it with watercolour. So I'm going to try and leave some bits of white paper as I'm making these, putting this wash on. But this is kind of the edge of the, the river and it's going to lead up through to this distance which is which is where the the darkest dark is and then the lightest light so that's that's kind of where I want the the eye to go it's been a real privilege for me today to come here to the Cuthbert's Mill to paint and to uh, to go inside and have the opportunity to talk to experts like Nikki about the paper making process this looks all very technical in here, uh, Nikki. Uh, what goes on in here? Yeah, this is our wet lab, and this is where we test incoming raw materials such as pulp. We use wood pulps and cotton pulps in our mm. papers. Uh, we source the wood from sustainable managed forests, and for the cotton, we use cotton linters. Cotton linters? What, what are they? Yeah, they're the seed hairs from the cotton plant, oh. and they are a byproduct of the textile and fashion industry. Um, what we're looking at when we test the cotton is the fibre length, and we use the schlick. The medieval machine. The medieval, yeah, this is the only one that there is of this particular type. Goodness me. Yeah, so what we do is we have a suspension of fibres and some water here. Just drop this grid down, pull it back up again, and as you can see it's caught a load of the pulp. And this gives us an idea of the length of the cotton fibres before oh. we use it on the paper machine. And what do the fibres do? Well, the fibres obviously make up the sheet, but they give it strength. The long fibre makes a stronger sheet. Okay. So we want nice long cotton fibres. We do. That is excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, learn a lot. I'll um, yeah. try to remember it. <laughs> I'm just trying to put in the river as it disappears off up the off up the way there, and try and get some create some distance in here, and still leave some of that light that I can. 
probably be more careful than I would normally be, but... I'm conscious of that. Not committing myself too early, I think. I'm, I'm working here with... Uh, it's kind of spring-ish going into summer, I suppose, so I'm kind of blue and yellow and greens, a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, try not to use too many individual colours so that mixing them all together, I kind of automatically create some colour harmony between all the different colours that I'm using. So I've just that part of it is kind of automatic really rather than me having to think too much about what colour goes with what. So I tend to only use maybe four, five colours in my work or in each painting for that very reason. So I don't have to think too much I suppose. I want to be more spontaneous I suppose, is that the, the right way of thinking about it? It's all kind of automatic, I guess. All right, I'm coming to the final stages of think of this. I mean, there is, there's a lot more I could add, but it's, it's, it's drying pretty slowly in this, uh, now that I'm down in the dip. The light goes and it, it comes and it goes, and I, but I do like this, this dark river. And I'm kind of stuck between two minds, whether to go completely dark or leave it lighter. If I leave it light, I can always make it dark later in the studio. Uh, but I want to just try and capture something of the day and I think this is kind of almost getting there. So well, although this might not be a complete success, it's been really, really enjoyable. Enjoyed this, it's been good.